Hello, today I wanted to install Diet Pi OS on my Raspberry Pi and also install Casa OS on the Diet Pi. So, first we'll need a flashing software. I already showed how to install Raspberry Pi Imager. It's really just clicking download for Windows and installing it. So, today I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with uh, Valena Itcher. So, you just, it's the same, you just go to the download page, you need to click download and then, well, so you need to select first either the installer or the portable version. I selected the installer. So, after installing it, you need to download some kind of software for the Raspberry Pi. That's where we download the Diet Pi OS. So as the system, it, uh, it will be Diet Pi. Caso uh, OS, it's just like a extension. So after downloading the right version, for me it was uh, Raspberry Pi 2, 3 or 4, you need to uh, unpack it. Really, you just uh, need the EMG file, image file. Uh, you don't need any other kind of file that was there. Then, for example, for Raspberry Pi installer, you just select custom or yeah, it was custom. Then you need to select the storage and click write. And then uh, for Balena Itcher, you would select uh, flash from file. Then you select the EMG file, the storage and flash, just like with the Raspberry Pi major. Be careful to not select a wrong drive. Then, after flashing and verifying, we can connect it to the Raspberry Pi. So, sadly, at, in the first time that I tried it, I used a uh, dead drive. So now you can know how to detect a dead drive. You can see that we have numbers on the left and no like uh, colors, like uh, it doesn't say OK in any place and it will give us some kind of errors if we read a little bit, but in general we can see that it doesn't seem like a very um, like advanced kind of startup. So this is how it has to look. We have like OK signs on the left, it has colors, it has dead BIOS uh, on a bunch of places. Now we just need to wait. Even if we, it says login, sometimes it will also continue working. So for example, you will try to log in and then it will block you because it was trying to do something. So I would left it running for us for some time. So now, for example, it has login and you can see that I tried to log in and it continued doing things. So after it finished thinking, it will ask us to configure a bunch of things. First, if we want to send uh, data to Diet Pi, uh, you can accept it, you can decline, you can do whatever you want because it's Linux and it's open. Yeah, so after clicking that I didn't want, uh, it did some things. You will have to wait a little bit for it to configure itself and then we will have to configure our keyboard. So I was just looked what uh, configuration you can use uh, but since i will use uh, most of the time ssh uh, to connect to it you i didn't uh, set up any kind of like special keyboard settings i just left everything on default now it asks us if we want to change the uh, password of our user uh, you can either skip it by clicking cancel 
or you can click on OK to change the password that you will use to log in and change to do uh, installs or changes. So then it asks us if we want to disable UART console. If you don't know what UART console, you can disable it. It will free a little bit of space in the memory and also in the RAM. So now we finally are in the diet by config. Here you can change everything you want. What I recommend setting, it's the interface of the internet. So, I, did, uh, I didn't do this uh, while I was here. Uh, I recommend setting up a static IP. Also, yay, I, one thing that I did is changing the GPU and RAM memory split to server. Well, it was already on server. So it's not really a um, change. Also, I, I just was trying different things. I also changed the, the overclock to a high ARM. Uh, I, I guess it's ARM, yeah, for the uh, processor. Yeah, you can see also, yeah. Uh, by the numbers, so you have a higher uh, me for the CPU megahertz and less for the GPU. Also, you can here config some kind of um, protect temp uh, temperature limit and idle frequency. I lowered the idle frequency from 600 to 300, although in my case for some reason it did never went l less than a thousand uh, megahertz uh, here you can also change ha the amount of time where the cpu runs and the at the highest um, possible speed while it's booting i selected 60 uh, seconds if I'm not wrong, uh, yeah, 60 seconds. So it starts really fast and it has like a little bit more of time to start. Here you can also update your uh, bootloader firmware. I first installed the RPI EE Broom package to do all those these things um, after checking that I didn't have any kind of update I went to enable swap files First, to enable it you can do that from there you will open that by drive manager here we need to assign our drive as a swap file like compatible so you first select the drive or where it's mounted and here we have swap file so after clicking enter and switching from 0 to 1 you can enable the swap file that will be in a size automatic size 2 and above, uh, and above will set the, the a custom file size after setting it to automatic for some reason it didn't enable the swap file so i used uh, i used my brain to calculate that 4096 is 4 gigabytes and finally swap file was enabled now you can switch uh, other things i didn't do anything other because it was correct already then i just clicked on uh, exit or back I didn't, uh, so then you can change the language or region uh, for example i changed the time zone so i don't have any kind of issues with the internet 
uh, have in mind that uh, I was searching for Spain because I'm very intelligent and that's wrong because you need to search for a city for example for me it was Madrid then uh, I tried to change the system locale but they didn't understand what the hell all these numbers were so I left it like that then uh, uh, again for uh, I by accident went to change the keyboard uh, but it, it doesn't matter if we are going to use SSH now I checked other things like security, uh, network options from here, by the way, I didn't do it, but okay, I've enabled Wi-Fi, the, but you don't really need that uh, if you don't want well, to do things with Wi-Fi. Um, from here, the correct things to do would be to uh, set up the static IP. So, also, you can change the login. So, for example, well, it's only the display output login. So, every time you uh, turn on your Raspberry Pi, for example, it automatically logins to the terminal. You also have a bunch of other uh, options here that you will have to install other things to use. I used, uh, well, I that the automatic login to root and then well I checked what tools is it's for benchmark uh, now all I also changed the the server from the drop beer to open SSH um, you can use whatever you want I preferred open SSH so, it's not a video about that iOS, so let's jump directly to where I installed Casa OS. First, we'll have to log in to our Raspberry Pi with SSH. Uh, don't forget to set your username, then uh, add and the IP. Uh, I only uh, wrote the IP so it tried to log in with my Windows username then after logging in you'd see the same that you would see on your Raspberry Pi when you connected the, uh, the HDMI ca cable from here you can do the SSH software I mean that by software thing, but hear me out. Since it's a CastOS video, first I recommend doing the CastOS install and looking if there is CastOS things that you would want to use and not installing them directly on the with that by software. So what's the difference? The difference is that Casa OS runs things in a in a container. Uh, I forgot what was the name of the app. Um, a Docker com container. So uh, I did an error by going directly to that by software because. First, the, the first thing I would recommend to do is installing Casa OS. Well, if you want to use Casa OS, of course. So, I went to my router settings because, well, I didn't explain how I did the static IP first. So, I went to my router settings, then to DHCP server and address reservation. Here you can see that I already added the date by uh, thing the, the, to save an IP for it. But it, uh, since I was doing it with SSH, it broke a little bit. Uh, well, it 
broke, I had to restart the Raspberry Pi for it to work. So after solving all my issues, I went to install Casa OS. After searching in Google Casa OS, you can copy the command to do the installation. After uh, pasting the command in the terminal, Casa OS installer launched. Then after waiting some time, it uh, gave me an IP to log in on Casa OS. After, well, I had some errors, but anyways. Now we need to create a new user. You will need to set a username, a password and confirm the password. And now we are finally in the Casa OS dashboard. It looks very cool. Now we can take a look at what we have here. The storage, system status. Uh, we, you can see also an app store uh, and the files app. For some reason it showed me as if I had two storage options, but I only had one. I guess it's because I used an external drive of my main boot drive. And I guess it didn't understand how it was all set up. So that's all. From here you can do whatever you want. I to test I installed open speed test or what yeah open speed test. Uh, it will take a little bit of time depending on the drive that you use as a, your main drive. So for uh, if you use an SD card it will take a little bit longer. With an HDD or SSD, it will take less. But I think that's all for today's video because, well, it was already a very long adventure. Oh, and I'm really tired. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and see you in the next time. I guess I will show a little bit all my uh, how I set up this thing and maybe we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about how all this works thank you for watching again see you next time